All right, folks. Here we're going to talk a little bit about the different properties of soils. Now, I mentioned, you know, when you're looking at building something on a soil, uh, the properties of that soil are going to be very important to you. First of all, we've talked about these before, porosity, right? This is the amount of void space filled by air or water, or whatever, in the, the rock, the soil, uh, what have you. Uh, soils, on average, are about 50% void space and about 50% stuff, right? Uh, permeability then is related to this but it's the ability of of uh, those or how basically a measure of how interconnected those pore spaces are so it doesn't really matter if you have pore spaces if they're not connected the water the air can't go anywhere if they're nice and connected highly permeable um, it's going to flow easily through there and it's going to lead to you know high hydraulic conductivity Another important uh, property of soils is uh, the moisture, the drought resistance of the soil. And this is due to both adhesive and cohesive forces uh, within the, the, the soil itself. So the adhesive forces are things like, you know, positive and negative, you know, attractions. So clay, right, we weather out those, those minerals. We release the, usually a cations, positive ions, and we get the clays, which are left generally, you know, kind of negatively charged. Um, this is going to, you know, help because water itself is a polarized molecule. So clay has, you know, kind of an affinity to, to it, uh, keep water around. Quartz, being, you know, chemically neutral, electrically neutral, does not have this uh, ability. So uh, soils that have lots of quartz in them and very little clay are not going to have, you know, resistance to drought that much. Um, also, we have the uh, the uh, cohesive forces which are you know the tendency of water to want to stick to surface which we call like surface tension right? uh, plasticity another important property of the soil this is you know like plasticity right so plastic how, how can you bend it without breaking it right um, this increases with your clay content decreases with sand content I and mean, if you think about it you take your clay play-doh right you can make nice little snakes and stuff uh, try to do that uh, with dry sand won't, won't work very well, right? Uh, but again, water can drastically change the plasticity, so you can have something when it's wet be highly plastic, right, like that, that Play-Doh, but leave it out in the sun for a couple days, right, and dries out, now it's plasticity is almost nothing, right? It's going to just crack and break and crumble. Uh, so, so water can drastically change the amount of plasticity in a soil. The strength of a soil is the ability to be resist uh, being deformed under a stress. Uh, basically, how well do the particles stick together and not move? Some soils can lose their strength when disturbed, and we saw this in the earthquake uh, chapter when, we, uh, when they talked about liquefaction. Um, this is again where, while ground shaking, water is pushed up into the pore spaces and, you know, basically supports, you know, the load on top of it. And of course, you know, for a car or a house or something, water's no support at all. It's going to sink in, and then when the shaking stops, the ground settles and regains its strength. So now it's going to be hard to dig your car out. Sensitivity is how easily a material can lose its strength. So certain things can be very sensitive, other things not. So here we have wet, loose muds. Uh, those are very sensitive to earthquakes. The idea of liquefaction there. Compressibility is another very important uh, property of soils. This is the ability uh, of a soil to compact and reduce its volume under a load. So in clay-rich soils, this is going to be very significant. They can compact and squish, uh, not so much in, in quartz-rich soils. This can create settling problems like we have here in the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The issue here was that the soil on one side of the tower versus the other side had different compressibility. All right, so it compressed more on one side than the other. It's basically stopped leaning up the soil stopped compressing. Uh, but this is essentially an irreversible issue. So if you're trying to drive, you know, you're, you know, uh, trying to, you know, farm or anything, um, you don't want to drive over really wet soil uh, with your big tractors and stuff. It's going to, you know, compact the soil and then the roots won't be able to, to penetrate. The soil won't be able to drain. This is also why truck or uh, farm equipment has very wide tires to kind of spread out the weight of those that equipment so it doesn't compact the soil quite as much another interesting property is shrink swell property wet and dry soils can occupy completely different volumes due to these things called expanding clays there's a few clays out there that 
when they're dry, they occupy a small volume. When they get wet, they can incorporate large amounts of all water into their chemical structures and expand sometimes up to 500%. This, of course, can provide, you know, produce significant changes in volume uh, of the soil. This is also the stuff you use in cat litter, right? The cat peas, and it clumps it up. These are these expanding soils. We use them in drilling in order to increase density. Uh, but uh, looking at, you know, potentially buying a future house or something, if you look and you see these kind of zigzaggy cracks and such like that, that is not a good sign. It shows you that you may either have swing swell potential going on or you've had settling or something has happened there. Uh, the swing swell potential is the ability of a soil to expand. Some of them can do it up to 50% their volume, right? It's almost, you know, one and a half times their normal volume. Um, but uh, if you have over 3% shrink swell potential, you need to make sure you have a, a specialized foundation to, you know, not result in stuff like this. And then soil as our resource. It is, of course, our most important use of soil being for agricultural food production as our population continues to expand. We're going to need to, need to more and more land for agricultural food production. Some important definitions around uh, uh, soil as a resource, the ion exchange capacity. This is the ability of soil to exchange ions with water. In other words, so these ions cal you know, in, that like to be in water, um, how can we keep them around in our soil, right? So the more clays in organics, which are those negatively charged particles, we can keep some of those positively, positively charged cations around a little bit better. Um, soil fertility is the ability of, to provide the necessary nutrients for plant growth. And obviously, the more you use the soil, the less fertile it becomes. Essential nutrients. Now, these are the most critical nutrients for plants, not for squirrels, not for us, for plants. They include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Uh, this is uh, stored in the soil's ions. If you have enough um, clays and organics around, it's going to help to keep those around. If you lost your clays and organics, um, then a lot of these are going to go travel away, right? Because if you've got a lot of quartz in your soil, that's not going to keep those those essential ions around uh, for you. Right. As a resource, I mentioned, we have mined some of these very old, uh, highly weathered tropical soils like this here. It's called an oxisol for aluminum, which is strong, lightweight, and resists corrosion. The, uh, the mineral that we mine is actually called bauxite. And again, it comes from those very highly weathered tropical soils. Uh, we can also get things like kaolinite and gypsite from these. Uh, these are aluminum rich clay minerals and kaolinite clays. You'll notice uh, you'll know from uh, their use in uh, in makeups, in, in um, uh, ceramics, tiles, paint, stuff like that, because they have such a pure white color. If you're going to start with uh, if you want to end up with a consistent product, you got to start with a pure base. So these kaolinite, kaolinite clays are often used as the base. And if you're like me and you got lots of stomach problems, you probably drink lots of kaolinite in the form of Pepto-Bismol here. Right? Now, soil loss and mitigation is another big issue, right? Soil movement defined as the movement of soil away from the place where it originated, right? Erosion, of course. And of course, wind and water preferentially move those smaller and lighter materials like clays and organics. You can't pick up the sand size. Maybe a big wind could pick up the silt size, but it's it's mainly picking up your clays and your organics and your dust and stuff like that, removing those. And again, that's bad because we need those to keep our nutrients around to keep the, the soil fertility up. Right. Again, this reduces our soil fertility. Of course, naturally, you know, soil erosion and formation are imbalanced. How do we know that? We have soils for one, and they haven't completely overtaken the planet for two. Right? Agriculture, construction, deforestation, all of these have led to soil loss, which of course is when we get the rate of erosion greatly outpacing the rate of formation, which is our present situation and should highlight the idea for at least on our time scale, soils are a non-renewable resource. Some other things that soils... Uh, you know, uh, about soil loss, it's not evenly distribu distributed everywhere, right? Uh, steeper terrain is going to have more soil erosion, uh, the type of crops and livestock, and the intensity of the agricultural activity is all going to vary how much soil erosion there is. Some consequences, again, loss of fertility, 
sediment pollution choking up drainage systems, increased flooding, disrupt ecosystems, uh, carries fertilizers and pesticides, which are no bueno for, for the rest of our biological systems, right? So these are all, you know, plus, uh, you know, the more soil we lose, the less we have to, to use, and we're going to need more, not less, as far as the future of soils, right? All right, folks, hopefully you enjoyed.